Hi guys, Molten here and welcome back to another video in my Chess Pro S series. So this one's going to be focusing on how to defend, a topic I notice a lot of people tend to neglect. And I'm going to break it down into a few core concepts which I apply to my own games and hopefully by the end of the video you have a much better understanding of how to hold difficult positions. And stick around to the very end and I'll also give you a challenge problem which will require you to pull all the knowledge you've learned throughout this video and put it together. So stick around, like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you very soon. Okay, so let's jump into our first example. So in this one we can see that black's last move was bishop f7 to g6. So the first thing you should always do is ask yourself what is your opponent threatening. So I'll give you a few seconds. Can you work out exactly what black is up to here? So black is threatening to play the move, queen takes c3 next move, followed by a nice bishop a3 checkmate since the two bishops would checkmate the king on these long diagonals. If we look at this position we can see that white is already a pawn up and it's white to move. So here we come to our first concept and this is probably one of the most important ones um, throughout and that is to always try and remove your opponent's piece which is causing you the most problems or the most dangerous piece. So in this particular case, we can identify that the bishop on g6 is probably black's most dangerous piece. We can also see that white is already a pawn up, so trading down definitely helps us. So here the correct move for white is just to take this bishop off the board, and it doesn't matter that black improves the pawn structure, we're a pawn up and we also remove all of black's threats. This would be a much safer move than, say, going for any sort of capture on um, d5 or trying to maintain the pieces on the board. It's just a much simpler way of playing. So let's go on to the second example now. So here we have black to move, and again we ask ourselves what is white threatening next move, and we can see white has two main threats. For firstly, we can't take the rook because white is going to play the move bishop to f6 as well as rook to h3 next. So we have no pieces around our king. So if we go by what we learned in the previous example, we should try and remove white's most dangerous piece. And what's white's most dangerous piece here? It is the queen on h6. So if we can offer a queen trade, this would be highly beneficial to us. Also, black is already a lot of material up. And also, I want to introduce the concept of bringing more pieces into the actual defense. Here we have no pieces around our king. So the correct move here would be queen to b2. This would be much better than, say, the move knight to d7, which looks like it stops one threat and it's bringing a piece into defend. But again, we're not forcing any trades off the board. That's why queen b2 is much better. And after the move rook to h3, we can force a trade after the move queen to g7, solving all of our problems because white has to lose a move to play queen h4 in order to avoid the trade of pieces here. So in this next example we can see that black isn't under any direct attack right away but white does have the potential to set up some sort of kingside attack later on. Anyway, here as black he decides to neutralize the bishop pair which is one of the concepts I want to introduce as well. And Hare Krishna played the move bishop h2 check which is a common theme in this particular type of opening. After king h1, he wins the tempo, softening somewhat the f2 point and some squares in the white position before offering the trade with bishop to f4. And here white played the move knight to f3 and Hare Krishna simply takes on c1 and without the bishop pair it's just going to be a little bit easier for black to defend against any possible kingside attacks. This is also similar to the very first example, if you remember back, where we also neutralized white's bishop pair there. So keep this in mind. So the last concept I want to introduce to you is that of tempo, which is very important when you're attacking, but also very important when you're defending. So in the following position, Mortlaev, as the white pieces, was playing against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus just played the move queen to h4. And here Mortlaev needs to untangle his pieces with white because even though he's not under any direct attack, if he doesn't manage to get his pieces out, especially the bishop on c1, then it's very possible that black will generate a dangerous kingside attack very soon. So he plays the move pawn to g3 first, hitting the queen, 
the queen only has a couple of squares. If it goes to h3, then knight f4 would gain a tempo again. And if queen goes to f5, we can even play the move pawn to d4, shutting out this bishop, and also threatening to play bishop to c2 next move, gaining an extra tempo in the queen there as well. So instead the queen went to h6. Now we have to be very careful not to play the move knight to f4, because after knight to f4, then we might get hit by the move pawn to g5. Also, if we try and defend the pawn with the move pawn to e7, it's very likely that we'll lose it, so we need to finish our development as quickly as possible first. So Mordlayer plays this move knight to c5, utilizing the idea of a discovered attack, and also looking to attack the bishop on c5 as well, and win a tempo. So after d4, the queen's being attacked, so black has to move, and then Mordlayev takes on c5, Magnus takes on e6, bishop e3, and we get a position with equal material, but white has the bishop pair, and he solved all his development problems um, here by giving back the pawn. Okay, so now comes the hard part. I've given you a challenge problem which came from a game played by Ian Napomniachi with the black pieces, and your job is to work out the correct and best defense for black to neutralize white's dangerous attack here, using everything you've learned so far in this video. Also, I got this position from one of Daniel Naroditsky's streams, where when he was explaining it, it really caught my eye because we both came up with the same answer and conclusion, but from two completely different trains of thought. The way he was explaining it was to visualize the final position and the ideal situation and scenario you could get, um, whereas I was trying to piece bit by bit using pattern recognition I had learned previously as well as different um, core concepts. And the interesting part is that we both reached the same answer anyway, so it just goes to show you that there are many ways to solve a chess problem. Anyway, I'll give you a bit of time on this one and I'll see you shortly to see how you went. So hopefully you had some time to pause the video and work out the solution to this problem. So first things first, what's white threatening? So white is looking to take the bishop on d6, so we need to move it and we want to do so with tempo. So bishop h2 is a common theme which we've seen in this particular structure from our previous example. After the move king to h1, we want to neutralize the bishop pair later on, but firstly, we need to get rid of white's most dangerous piece. So what's white's most dangerous piece? It's this knight on the f5 square. So in this position, we can gain a tempo with the move knight to b6, attacking the bishop on c4. After the move bishop to b3, we've gained that extra tempo in order to neutralize the knight off the board by trading it for our light square bishop. And after the move pawn takes, we don't give time for white to develop his dark squared bishop to say g5 and develop an attack. This is where our previous move comes into the game. We play the move bishop to f4, neutralizing white's bishop pair. And here black is totally fine. Um, there's no more attack here for white since he only really has a bishop on b3 attacking our king side. For those of you who managed to get that one, excellent work. Otherwise, feel free to rewatch anytime. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next part. Take care.